Good morning. We're on day 11 of the third. We're praying for our youth. We're praying for direction, for guidance. And each day of the 31, there is a different spirit that we're introducing for prayer. And so at any day, I'm going to make a playlist of this when I'm finished. I've discussed before, if you go back to my last prayer or maybe the first one, you'll see why I'm doing this. And we'll do a recap on day 12 of what we've discussed already. And I have a link to those that have already been done. Today is Sunday. It's May 30th, Al. One more day in May. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. Um, our scripture for day 11. Well, our message for day 11 is availability. And that's a willingness to go. And the scripture is Isaiah 6 and 8. And it reads. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. So today we're discussing a willingness to go and I'm trying to not make these too long as I said if I don't have the uh, if, if there is not a copyright caption in the actual text that I'm reading for for this a lot of these are not my words some of this may be my testimony but because I use somebody information I am not monetizing these I don't want to make ads because this is solely reaching out to try and help someone this is not about me trying to uh, give you spiritual guidance um, for a cost. I just, you know, I just want to help somebody. And in doing so, I like, you know, one of the things I like doing is cooking. And so I do my cooking videos are monetized. If I use somebody else's recipe or if I got the idea from somebody, I'm going to give them credit. I have chosen a different let's talk about the availability and the willingness to serve we're looking at the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis united in faith hope and love availability and essential an essential key to discipleship and it's by the Catholic Spirit, Father Michael Schmitz. And this article is written June 6, 2017. And the question came from Sunday morning. And they said, I really want God to be able to use me. But I don't know how to go about it. I mean, I want to be a disciple of Jesus and not simply a nice person who goes to church. But I don't know how to make a difference. He says, first, praise God for the fact that he placed that desire in your heart. Too many of us are content with the idea of show up on Sunday, put something in the basket, and you're good. I think that might have been the vision of Catholicism that certain people have had in the past. But this was never an authentic perspective of what it means to be a Christian. A Christian is one who is brought into a very particular relationship with God and Jesus Christ. A Christian is one who has been made into a child of God, the Father, by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. A Christian is a friend of God. Christians are people who have surrendered their wills, their minds, their hearts, and their entire lives to Jesus Christ. Now, of course, becoming a Christian, being a Christian is also essentially about being made into a member of his body, the church. The church is absolutely necessary, but it has been my experience that when we talk about the church, too many of us default into imagining being part of a club. Rather than recognizing that we are brought into the church, not only for our own sake, but also for the sake of being Christ in the world. 
Okay, all of that being said, there is one more necessary thing in order for the Lord to make a difference through you. This thing is not great skills or great giftedness. You would not need to be perfect or flawless. You would not need an advanced degree in theology or to be employed by the church. You would not need anyone's permission for this. The only thing required, being available. I know that this might sound a little anticlimactic, but there is virtually nothing more valuable than being available. Think of it. It is likely that there is someone who has made a profound difference in your life. What was it that qualified them to make that difference? I imagine they had something to offer, coaching, teaching, parenting, being a friend, etc. But the most likely scenario is that they were simply available to you. This is the secret of being a great parent, coach, friend, pastor, or Christian. And by great, I simply mean someone who has made a positive difference in the life of someone else. Our culture tends to measure something like greatness in terms of fame. But this has never been a reliable criteria for true greatness or excellence. There are many famous people who are not excellent. People who might be recognized on the street, but excellence can go unnoticed. The kind of excellence that you want is not always recognized, even when it is there. People who are available are generous, generous with their time, with their attention, and with their heart. In fact, a technical term for this might be magnanim magnanimity. Magnanimity means greatness of soul. Great people have greatness of soul or heart. They have the perspective of abundance. There is always more, not less. Some people operate with an attitude of scarcity. There is never enough. Those people who walk around with this attitude of scarcity never have enough time, attention, or love to share. But the Christian is called to live like Christ. And Jesus was certainly great. Jesus was most definitely magnanimous. This isn't to say that he never got tired or burned out. But it is to say that he approached people with the attitude of how can I give? Please keep in mind that Jesus didn't invest deeply in every person he met. He loved and gave to all those who would receive, but he was radically available to only a few. The same might be true for you. When you follow Christ and live with an attitude of abundance and magnanimity, you might only be available. You may only be available, be able to be available to a few. That's okay. You are not greater than Jesus, but this is the key availability. Begin each day or each week asking God to guide you toward those for whom he is calling you to be available. Give God permission to interrupt your day with these people. Begin to see these interruptions as divine appointments. That is, see them not as distractions that take you away from what you should be doing at any given moment, but as they truly are. Opportunities to be available to God at any and every moment of the day for the purpose of his will. That is a very good message. And I need to um, give reference. Reference, I'm sorry. Father Schmitz is Director of Youth and Young Adult Ministry for the Diocese of Duluth and Chaplain of the Newman Center at the University of Minnesota Duluth. And you can reach him and that's his email address. That You know what I like about this message? It is very, very... Uh, it's simple, you know, even for a child. And, 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 it, and it's an awesome message. But the reason why I'm on, and uh, so you can go and, and there are a lot of other uh, topics that you can read and research on the top. So I'm gonna come back here a lot because I like I like his his wording and everything. But anyway, I want to give y'all um, Let us pray. This prayer is to be to the prayer is to be used mightily for God's purpose. I'm trying to find the author, but here is the the website here. Um and excuse me. 
Father God, I bring myself before you, Lord, and I thank you for your great mercy and unfailing love for me. Excuse me. I thank you for loving me so much that you sent your son to take my sins upon his shoulders in order for me to receive forgiveness of all sins and receive eternal life through Christ. Lord, I ask that you bring a quick healing and restoration to my life in all areas where I may need it. I ask that you bring deliverance to any areas which may be bound by the enemy so that we all may walk in the complete freedom you have intended for us to walk in. I ask that you draw us all closer to you, bringing us into a deeper, more intimate relationship with you in order for us to fully understand and know more of you and your kingdom. We surrender ourselves to you as a vessel through which will you will met through which you will manifest and show your glory and we now yield ourselves completely to you so we can accomplish all you have called us to accomplish as a purpose in life i ask that you now use us mightily for your purposes that we may bring glory to your name in all that we do we thank you lord we love you lord we worship you we praise your holy name in jesus name we pray amen Amen. So I want to give a little testimony. And I think at the end of this, I'm going to try to, sign, try to find some way to incorporate what, what I've talked about into my life and how it's helped me. And then it may also may cause you to think and it may help you. Listen, like I said, I don't get very, very many views. <laughs> y'all, I'm going to be honest with y'all. The, the one yesterday <laughs> got more views than any. Uh, and, and I'm grateful. Like I said, these are not monetized because I don't want to. Because I don't want to add to turn anybody away. Y'all, I just want to help somebody. You know, I was I was listening to this pastor, and he said one day you can't help everybody, but just help the ones that God placed in your life. So if you're here, first of all, welcome he, over here. I hope something I said helps you, lifts you up, uh, cause you to want to do and get to know Christ cause you to want to be a beacon of life for someone else and so i want to just give y'all a testimony nothing really major but so you know in doing this and 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 reading this and quoting scripture reading a little bit praying it's actually helping me in the midst of me helping someone else that's why i said monetary gain is not your only blessings sometimes your blessings blessings come in just peace and revelation and what you need to do to have a better life and so uh, i'm talking real low because my grandson is sleeping with me <laughs> he's here from houston so he's in my face so that's why i'm talking so low but um yesterday morning i got up real early to clean and uh, so when i when i go in i'm sorry y'all my bad so when I go in early, uh, when I get up early and I go into the kitchen, if I'm going to cook anything, the first thing I do when I get in there is wash my hands. And then I don't know if anybody else, but I, I run me some water. I like to have hot, soapy, bleachy water in the sink. That's just the way I work in the kitchen. Because if you're cooking, you can rinse out, wash out a utensil or whatever and have it dry. You know, just to keep it, keep your flow, <laughs> you know. But anyway, um, and so I had started that. And then I came in the back and I got started doing something else. And when I went back in there, I heard, I was like, what is that? Water. The water had overflown over the sink, and so it had spilled all over in the kitchen. Now, if y'all see my cooking videos, the kitchen is not very big. But that floor was almost covered in water, so I immediately turned the water off. At that time, I could have gotten angry. I could have gotten upset. But this calmness came over me. And know what I said? It said, why worry about all that water? Take that water out of your kitchen and slide it on over to the other part of the house. You have to do it anyway. And it brought back memories of my childhood. When we were young, when we were clean, my mom would make us, um, we would have to actually like scrub the kitchen and bathroom floors. Like when you mop, you know how you get those you have now? You had a little mop, you sprayed a little water and, um, you mop no when we were growing up as kids we had to put a good bit of water on that floor and scrub it because my mom said in order to really get it clean you got to use water and i immediately thought about that lesson how, how i was taught to clean the bathroom in the, in the uh, kitchen and i thought about that and i just took that water and got to sweeping and uh, got the broom and scrubbed it and went on about my day i i, I didn't fret about it now the uh, the 
had I not been doing this in my opinion, I probably would have said a few curse words. <laughs> Hey, we're human. Let me tell you something. That's another thing. Don't think that being a Christian is boring. Don't think you can't have a fun, feel life. Listen, you've seen my videos. The most recent one, of the most recent ones I did, I had bought a few spirits from Kroger. Uh, I'll probably get some for tomorrow for Memorial Day. It's, you know, it, gluttony is a sin. What does it say that you can't drink? You just, you're just not supposed to get drunk. Listen, live life, have fun. Laughter is good for the soul. Don't let nobody tell you being a Christian is boring. No, being out of the safety of the Lord is not only boring, but it's also scary. You know what I'm saying? I, I hope I'm helping somebody. I hope I'm making sense. I know at least one person understand where I'm coming from. But I just want y'all to know that, first of all, I, I encourage you to bring God into your life. You know, study the word. And as you get closer to him, I'm telling y'all, because I have been there. I, I, I'm going to give y'all my testimony again. I had my first child in the 10th grade of high school. I stopped going to school because I was embarrassed. Uh, the counselor called my mom and said she's always been an honor student all her life. She's going to mess up her GPA if she don't um, get back in school. And that's why I didn't graduate. I was like... 2.99 or something like that and you know they don't round up for GPAs and that's why I didn't graduate with honors but I still went to college I started off at Grambling I didn't finish there I ended up graduating from LSU I didn't go to Baton Rouge I graduated from LSU through uh, the college the, the local LSU in our area so but anyway I'm telling y'all all that to tell you this so I you know being a young single parent like I said, I had my first child. I hadn't even had a job. So that summer, she was two months, and I got a job working in a hospital as an admit clerk. And I knew then that doing that job, that I wanted to help people. Went to school, started off for education. When I had to do my observation, I was like, I can't deal with these kids every day. So I went back in business. So now I'm still helping people. As a business professional, I'm still helping people because I'm helping people find jobs, putting people to work, things like that. So I still feel, you know, I'm still helping people on a daily basis. You know, I'm answering complaints. I'm, 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 I'm solving conflicts. Um, you know, just... When you find your purpose, and if you can work in your purpose, that is truly a blessing. And, you know, sometimes, yeah, you get discouraged from what you're doing and, or whatever, but, you know, you have to ask yourself, is God in it? Are you really doing things that make you, at the end of the day, feel like, thank you, Lord, I've helped somebody? Is that what you intended? Is that what you really wanted? But, you know, what the, the, the saddest part of my life, other than losing my mom and dad, was or losing someone I love, death is always hard for me, but was when I couldn't, that summer of 1985, when all of my classmates, my schoolmates were getting ready to go back to Graham, and I couldn't go because I had my second daughter. That was a, and, and y'all, that's when, and I, that's going to be another video, i tell y'all about that. But anyway, so what I'm telling you is when I got that, when I really, really got a relationship with, with God, with Jesus, and I allowed him to come into my life, and I stepped back from things. I tried to step back from self. And then you can tap into what he really wants you to do. But you got to be willing and you got to be able. And we make mistakes. We're not perfect. We're learning. But man, it's such a place of peace. Things that we used to, I used to just get bawling mad. Now I'm like, Lord, help me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I stopped letting emotions and the problems of the world change my attitude. Because God is still there no matter what you're going through. And so sometimes what, we, what he put us through is to help us get to the next level. You understand what I'm saying? You worrying about stuff and you we're going to worry because we're human. But what I'm saying is you put so much focus on what's wrong, you don't see what's right. Just like yesterday morning, all that water on the floor. I could have said, Lord, have mercy. I got to mop up all this water. No, I did what my mama told us to do. Take that broom and scrub the floor, baby. That's what I did with that water. So in your life... What are you needing to scrape? What do you need to get rid of? It could be a person. It could be a place. It could be a thing. Everything I do, y'all, here is love. I looked at my analytics just now, and do you realize, I realized, excuse me, 90% of my viewers are not subscribed. Um, I don't really emphasize subscribing a lot but I think if you come here 
especially if you look at these prayers and look uh the lessons that, I, that I, I've read because I'm not teaching but the lessons that I, I, I research and I'm reading I think it may help you even if you don't subscribe you know what it's it's, it's not the quality quantity for me it's the quality okay so it's Sunday it's a Sunday before Memorial Day I don't think I'm going to church today my grandbaby's here and I don't know if my daughter bought him well I, I got him some outfits and I'll share those with y'all but I just I'm just I just want to help somebody somebody somewhere is hurting I know a lot of kids that they're not being raised by their parents you know God would be your mother and father when your mother and father are no longer here because I don't have my parents anymore either so I just want to help somebody y'all have a good weekend much love bye